Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name as always is Luma and today we're going to go over how to download, install and set up OBS so you can start streaming. To start things off, we'll head to obsproject.com and download the version appropriate for your use case, whether that be Windows, Mac OS or Linux. Run the .exe file and go through the installer. Once the installer is complete, press finish and OBS will start. The first window that will pop up is an optimization wizard. In this video, we'll be focusing on streaming, so we'll optimize for streaming and press next. All of the variables set in this wizard can be changed in the settings menu once we get into OBS. If you're streaming to Twitch or Facebook Gaming, you're going to be capped at 1080p 60fps. If you're going to be streaming to YouTube, you might be able to stream at 4K 60fps. For this exercise, I'll set it to 1080p 60fps. If you need to adjust the setting, you can do so by going to the settings menu later on. In this tutorial, we'll also be talking a bit about resolution and bitrate. If you haven't dealt with resolution and bitrate before, this can seem a little bit confusing. I'm not going to go into all the details on how bitrate works, but think about it like this. Streaming is like painting a picture. Your canvas is your resolution, and bitrate is the amount of paint you have available. You can have whatever sized canvas you want, but you're still limited by the amount of paint you can put on it. A huge canvas with very little paint will look terrible compared to a smaller canvas with the same amount of paint. When setting up your bitrate, we have to take the limitations of your upload speed and streaming service into consideration. If you're unsure what bitrate your bandwidth can handle, you can run the bandwidth test and let OBS come up with a recommendation. I will also share the recommended bitrate for every common resolution on the screen as we get to that input. In this window, you can choose to connect your account directly through OBS. In the drop-down, you receive a bunch of different options. First, select which one applies to you. Let's start with Facebook Live. Select it in the drop-down menu and press Get Stream Key. This will bring you to the Live Producer section of Facebook. Under Get Started, select Use Stream Key. Then, next to the Stream Key lower down on the page, press Copy. Next, go back to OBS and paste this into the Stream Key section. And then input your bitrate settings using the examples on the screen. Once this is done, press Next. If you're going to be streaming to YouTube, you'll get a couple of different options. For normal low latency live streaming, choose RT MPS. If you're streaming HDR, you should choose HLS. For now, let's go with RT MPS. Next, we press Get Stream Key. This takes us to the YouTube Live Control Room. Seeing as we're not entirely ready to start streaming, choose the Start button under Later Date and then Go under Streaming Software. Next, we'll go to the top left of the screen and choose Stream. Under Stream Key, we're going to press the Copy button next to our Stream Key. Make sure not to copy the Stream URL or the Backup Server URL as these won't let you stream at all. As with Facebook Gaming, go back to OBS and paste the Stream Key. But before you click Next, enter the bitrate that corresponds with your resolution from the examples on the screen right now. For Twitch, it's super easy, and you press Connect Account, Login and Authenticate, and OBS gets your stream key. We now input our desired bitrate, which for me is 6000 kbps, and press Next. Here we can see our current settings. There are a few things you might want to change before going live, and we will go over these later on in the series. But for now, we'll leave them as is and press Apply Settings. We've now successfully installed OBS and we're ready to set up our scenes. If you, like me, happen to close one of the docks by accident, go to View, then Docks, and then the dock you happen to close to get it back. Then simply move the dock to one of the sides or the top of the bottom of the preview window and it will dock in place. So let's uh, set up our first scene. At default, we have our scenes dock bottom left and to the right of that, you'll find the sources dock. These are the docks we'll be uh, using in this video. Let's start with the gameplay scene. I find it very useful to name both my scenes and my assets so I can easily identify them. My system is something like this. As a system default, OBS has a scene already up and running and OBS requires at least one scene to be active at all times. Let's start off with naming our scene. Right click the scene in the scene stock and choose rename. I'll name it Broadcast Gameplay. We now need to add some elements to it and uh, we do this in the sources dock. 
Seeing as this is a gameplay scene, let's start with the game we want to show. Press the plus symbol at the bottom of the source stock. As you can see, we've got a bunch of sources to choose from. There are two ways of doing this if you're doing a single PC stream. You can use the game capture option, which allows you to single out the application you want to have shown. Or you can use the display capture option, which, like the name suggests, captures whatever display you choose. If you want to capture a console or using a dual PC setup like me, you select the video capture option and select the capture card you're using. This is also the same element we'll be using when adding a camera. Let's start by adding a game capture element to our scene. I'll name this Element Game Capture. In the drop down menu named Mode, select Capture Specific Window. In the Window menu, select your game, then press OK. Capturing a display is the same process, only then you choose what display you're going to capture instead of what window. And lastly, we're going to look at how to add a capture card. Start by going to the plus symbol in the sources dock, then add a video capture, name it appropriately, end by selecting uh, the device you would like to capture, if need be set the resolution and the frames per second. Now that we got some action on the screen, we can move on to what people came to see, namely you. So let's add a camera. We again go to the sources dock and press the plus symbol. And this time we'll select video capture just like we did with the capture card. I'll name mine camera A5100. After this, we will go to the drop down menu and select our input device. For me, it's going to be Camlink. We should now have a live feed from our camera. You might feel like your image is looking bland or maybe the colors are weird. But don't worry about that for the time being. For now, let's just resize and place our camera. We now have both a camera and a scene to show off. The video is only half of what we need. Let's move on to audio. Start by right clicking your audio icon on the bottom right of your screen. Next, press sound settings. At the very top, you'll see a drop down menu that will show us all of our potential audio outputs. Normally, you won't need to change anything in this menu except if you're running a mixer like a GoXLR or a voice meter. Underneath output, you'll see a drop down for your input. This is where your mic comes into play. In my setup, I can choose to have my heads up mic be my primary input, but I prefer my pod mic to do that job. So I select the channel that this is hooked up to. One could think that it was as easy as that, but no, Windows sometimes resets these settings for no good reason. A workaround for this is to disable other audio inputs and outputs by again right clicking the audio icon, then heading to sounds, and under the recording tab you'll see all of your potential inputs. Right click and disable the ones you don't need. Lastly, find the one you do need and you want to have as a default, left click it, then at the bottom of the window press set default. To make sure your audio settings are set up correctly, let's head to settings within OBS. On the left side, press the audio tab. Now you'll see a whole host of drop down menus. Go to the drop down named desktop audio under global audio devices and set this to default. Next, we'll change the mic slash auxiliary audio to your preferred mic input. One last thing before we can get to streaming is to take a quick look at your encoder. Go to the Output tab under Settings and have a look at the encoder. If you're running an RTX card from NVIDIA, change this setting from X264 to NVIDIA NVENC H264 New. And then press OK. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, remember to subscribe so you can uh, get notified about the next one. Maybe give us a comment, a like and uh, hey, share it with a friend. You can catch me live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on Twitch links down below until next time i've been Loma, and i'm out i'm waiting for the gandhi oh no, drop oh Loma. Loma. Yes. I'm, I'm doing the safe way no oh okay um uh, hmm.